so it rained today but if you wait long enough the rain will pass and the opportunity will be there to do the things that you set out to do I meet people all the time that ask me a variety of questions and as you've probably heard recently, one of those questions was, why don't I eat meat? But another question I get asked often is, what is my diet? What do I eat? I met a gentleman about a day or two ago, and I was out in a public place, and I would never met him before, but he said to me, you know, your genetics is really showing right now. I kind of understood what he meant, and then we just went into a deep conversation about diet, about holistic living, and we also talked about religion. I won't touch that one in this discussion, but... What I will touch is this idea of diet. More y Yemeni tea. This, this Yemen tea, all you can get is outstanding. And the diet question comes down to the desire for a formula that will make life easier in terms of deciding what to do. Can you decide about food in a way that's easy and that will give you benefits? The answer is that it's a little more complicated when we're talking about food. So, the concept on diets is that some have developed diets that they can make money from. Atkins diet, for example. Uh, Weight Watchers, you, you name it. It's like you have these diets that are created as a business plan and many have experienced that they haven't benefited from these diets a few have but a larger group of individuals have not what we can learn from diet is that there are some ways of eating that have been tried for thousands of years and people have tried them with great benefit. Like many things, they don't apply to everyone, but they have a much better track record when we're talking about things that are beneficial to the human body. Myself, I've looked into Mediterranean diet. I've looked at blue zones. I've looked at a number of things over the years. But the one thing that made a difference for me is what is called the sattvic approach. Yes, there's a thing called the sattvic diet. I don't follow a diet. But I do try to follow some principles. The main principle I try to follow is that of living food, food that is alive, because I want to be alive. I look for food that brings life, that brings vitality, that is compatible and synchronous with the journey that I'm on, right? Because there is a philosophy in the food itself. How you eat and the way you eat, as well as what you eat, goes hand in hand with 
your goals and your objectives. Living food is about life. It's about affirming life. Living food is not a goal in and of itself, but it is the thing that helps you pursue the goals that you do have. Some of which is to live a better life, have a better quality of life, and to be present, mindful, and focused enough to do the things that you want to do at the highest level. People who are athletes, for example, the dietary recommendations for them would be different than for someone who sits in an office at a computer all day. Depending on how you live your life, your diet that you choose for yourself corresponds to the nature of your activities. I presently have a type of lifestyle that is very active physically and so I do put an emphasis on protein whereas others may not. Some who might put more of an emphasis on protein but they're more sedentary might see greater weight gain but because I am active borderline athlete then I do build protein. I build it through fruits and vegetables, beans, nuts and seeds. I don't consume animals, but I do pursue protein primarily through lentils and chickpeas and beans, black beans and that sort of thing. As I focused on my dietary transformation in 2021, 2022, I was inspired by Eris Latham, who was really the primary catalyst for where I am now. He was the number one catalyst for where I've gone in these last two, two and a half years. Eris Latham, Dr. Eris Latham. Dr. Sabi was um, a, an influence, but Eris Latham was my, my biggest, biggest kick because I saw in him the possibilities that I also had in mind, but I didn't know how to achieve them. But he gave out enough information to the public that I said, oh, that's a good starting point. Coconut water, sun-fired food, food that is natural, and some other things that he talked about in terms of like rock salt and olive oil and how you use these things. That was a good movement in the right direction. Then I learned, you know, from others. I learned from other things that I read and studied, things that I experimented with. And I got to a place where my diet works much better for me. But I'm thankful to Dr. Eris Lake. Here recently, I have been trying VPC, vegetables, proteins, and carbohydrates, eating them in that order. I found that when I eat in that order, I actually do better throughout the day. I've been eating healthier in the last two and a half years, but it has been with mixed results sometimes. The times where I would do very well, I gave credit to just eating fruits or just eating salads and nothing else in that day. But sometimes I wanted to mix things up. I was, I was wanting to, you know, eat my beans and I wanted to, you know, uh, eat vegetables and eat some fruits and, you know, I had learned various things that gave warning to being careful about when you eat this and when you eat that. But I will say that the research in 2015, that was conducted in 2015 and tested over the 10 years since, 
has proven very invaluable to me. Eating food in a certain sequence, vegetables first, then proteins and fats, and then carbohydrates has been transformative for me. It has allowed me to enjoy a greater variety of food in a single sitting. So I don't have to uh, spread things out quite as much as I used to. In addition to Dr. Eris Latham, I also have to thank Suba and Harsh. Suba did this video on the sattvic diet, the sattvic movement. And when I looked at it, I said, that sounds very interesting. I tried it, I bought some books on sattvic, and I really understood the principles to an extent where it was like, it changed the way that I deal with food altogether. And so, I like the ideas behind sattva, rajas, and tomas. I find that in reality it works extremely well. Sattvic is probably, in my experience, the closest thing that we have to a realistic assessment of what foods are good, what foods are not so good, what is the timing on those foods, and what Suba and Harsh have done in modern times has refined this idea of sattvic eating to an extent where we know what to do with oils now. Using things, creatively using things like uh, coconut flakes. I haven't tried that yet. But it's very intriguing how you can cook food without oil. I have tried, I have cooked food without oil successfully. But they have a way of cooking food that involves oils that seems very appetizing. So, but Suba and Harsh, they, they really have nailed it down based on my own experience of what foods you can eat and when you can eat them, and when should you avoid them. I like the idea of living food, and I like the idea that there is a baseline of knowledge going way back when that we can tap into to better understand these things. So we are sharing with you what we have noticed works best for us and best for the people who we share it with mm. and we realize there are these four core principles mm. that one can apply to anything they eat mm. and that is very simple L W P W. Okay. We'll explain each one. Please. Take two minutes for each. Please. The first L, L W P W, L stands for living. Mm. So it might even be surprising for many people to know that food is not inert, it has life in it. Mm. And when we eat food that has life, it will give us life. And then what is the opposite of life, if I may ask? Death. Then there is food which we term as dead food. Mm. There is per se no prana or no life force. Mm. So when we eat that, it's not going to give us life. We are not deciding whether it has nutrition or not, whether it has vitamins or not, because we are not looking at food with that aspect. Mm. We are saying, does it have life in it to give us that basic life that we need? Mm. So when we see living food, it's the first category of sattvic food. Mm. Now, what is living food? Anything that has come from earth, grown in earth with life in it, mm. and has retained its original properties mm. is living. Mm. So most commonly it would be fruits, vegetables, mm grains, seeds, nuts, sprouts. These are the categories which we consider living foods. And they have not been altered from the way nature has designed us to consume it. So W is, I would say, the simplest of them all. It simply means water rich. Water. Water rich. That eat food which is water rich. So the whole sattvic philosophy actually, the word sattvic originates from the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. 
and in the bhagavad gita these three gunas are described and there's a verse in the bhagavad gita chapter 17 mm. verse 8 mm. which shares the exact definition of satvic mm. food mm. and in that it says that are you that means the food that increases your life mm. satva which increases the goodness within you bala rogya which increases the strength within you is the first characteristic before plant based before anything before uh, wholesome before living it says is rasya in the bhagavad gita rasya the food is juicy in nature it's full of water and the simple way to understand now what is juicy food does it no mean no rasya i know rasna rasna <laughs> That's that quite the opposite. Okay, okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Russia. 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 Russia is juice within the food. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. In built. In built. In built into the food. So, like when we squeeze the orange. Uh, Full of Russia, Russia. right? Mm. You take a watermelon, a cucumber, mm. any vegetable, a mm. zucchini. Full of Russia. Wow. Uh-huh. And so what the water component. within the cells of that particular wow it's not just the juice of it that's uh, not what we talk uh, yeah. and that you can call it rasya food you can call it water rich food you can call it hydrating food but okay. essentially when we say that 70% of, of our body is made up of water we don't realize that we have a very strong need or a, a dire need to com- to constantly keep replenishing this water within our bodies but what are we doing we're eating food which is the actual opposite of that we're constantly eating just food which is devoid of water we eat so much of grains we eat chapati rice dal we just keep eating this all day but little do we realize that the basic need of the body is also to have water in built into our food which we are completely skipping or missing out in a lot of cases super so this is the innate cells in the wholesome foods which has hydration right the like cucumber yeah huh. even hippocrates who is uh, considered the father of medicine said all diseases begin in the gut many people have forgotten all diseases begin in the gut which is what hippocrates the father of modern medicine said over 2400 years ago As a result, we have destroyed our gut microbiome with antibiotics, glyphosate, and eating foods without any fiber. Now, how- that may be an overstatement to say that every single disease, but at least we know from seeing people who come to Satvik movement to heal themselves that most diseases can be healed when they heal the gut. No, no, that is not an overstatement at all. That's not overstatement at all. Yeah. Multiple studies are showing that every disease you you name it. somehow or the other you can connect with it somehow or the other yes mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. however it is never too late to repair your gut as your body is resilient and the microbes are resilient you just have to feed them enough fiber and a diversity of polyphenols so when you ask that what is the food mm. that we share at satvik movement it is that which can be easily processed mm. and digested by this gut mm. so that it doesn't collect accumulate and create waste mm. inside the gut mm. as long as that food can get easily digested by the gut we term it as satvik food of course there are different principles to assess what is satvik what is not but that's the food that's that we mm. yeah we mm. ate and we were able to reach our ultimate health i see i see um so you know in in gastroenterology standpoint so we say that okay so how do we promote good gut bacteria okay i always say that the first two years of life is absolutely critical so teach me here so is the, the cooking method also uh, is important correct is what you're trying to say right uh, it's like again when we prepare the meal mm. and we look at the dish and we can't even recognize what the vegetable is that it's so far altered from its original state and it's either cooked on very high temperatures or for too long mm. then the, there's no nutritive value that remains mm. so it's like going back to the principle rather than giving a answer giving a solution it's like principle is closest to the way mother nature gave it so the flavor of the vegetable should be higher than the flavor of everything we add to it so one of my teachers would say do you understand hindi yes you do i can speak but you will not understand okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so one of my teachers used to say something interesting that stuck with me he said ghee ki sabzi mein ghee ka swad aana chahiye torai ki sabzi mein torai ka aloo ki sabzi mein aloo ka swad aana chahiye 
हम ऐसा खाना खाते हैं आजकल वीट फूड भी स्पाइस इट सो मच वी डोंट टेस्ट द वेजिटेबल वी टेस्ट जस्ट द स्पाइस सो दैट इज नो लॉन्गर सात्विक दैट बिकम्स राजसिक एंड लाइक ग्रैंडपा लाइक Grandpa who's having his actual 92nd birthday today. Today, yeah. Who had a heart attack when he was 70 because they didn't believe in your nutritional science. They didn't believe in your protocols. Had a heart attack. Mom put her foot down and said, "Oh, you are improving your diet." He did 92nd birthday. Right. He's a good example because he had he had such a bad heart attack at in his 70s or at age 70, yeah, 22 years ago. Yeah. And he had like ejection fraction went down really low mm-hmm. and the doctors when he had in the low level of heart output they told him he had very poor prognosis and probably only had a 5 year lifespan prognosis. Right. And he didn't even change his diet to everything I wanted to eat. <laughs> I know, I he doesn't even do I mean, it that great. He doesn't great. do it that good and he's still 92 and okay now and he didn't have any more heart disease. It's like crazy. Cuz he eats a salad a day yeah. or something. Like he just doing. <laughs> No, he does much do much better, but I just wanted to point out the fact that it is really cool to see these changes in person and it reinforces why why you're doing this. Yeah. And And it's my mother's birthday this week. Yeah. And she's going to be 96. Right. And she didn't eat that healthy. She had she ate all kinds of junk when I was a kid growing up and she right. smoked cigarettes. Yeah. You know, and now that she got older, I forced her to do this because she's living in a neighborhood and she eats with us now and so yeah. she's And now she's and she has a full mental faculty. She drives. I know. She does that and she plays she's very sharp mentally and plays games and plays cards and plays all these, you know. Um but in any case, she's 96. Her birthday's this week. She's going to be 96 years old. Right. You know, no, it's 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 inspiring that we have these people in our lives that haven't had this all of the that haven't lost their lives early that we were yeah. able to get like a lot of more memories and I just want that for so many other people because people don't deserve to have their loved ones or their lifespans themselves ended early. It's just life short as it is. I know they're losing more than 20 years of potential enjoyable life. Right. And because then they they're afraid to be that healthy or live that long because they think their life's going to be good not going to be a good quality of life yeah. to live that long, but it's yeah. not true. Us nutritarians we're seeing it these people are living longer with a great quality of life. So it's really important to understand that the body has a language. It's always speaking to us. And one of those languages is inflammation. Inflammation is the fires in your body. talking about the kind of inflammation again that if you play close attention to it really could serve you in terms of helping you understand what's going on in your body cuz quite often you know you go into the doctor and you say hey I'm inflamed here they give you ibuprofen you know and send you home and your inflammation and I think you know this isn't because you're deficient in ibuprofen okay so you're not addressing the cause what you're doing is putting a bandaid over on the cause what you're doing is turning off the check engine light and the more and more we do that eventually what happens is that that sort of whisper like hey something's going on here you know you get a little inflammation in the gut you know and it's telling you hey something's going on you need to change some habit think about what you just ate think about what you didn't do maybe you didn't drink enough water etc like the body is trying to speak to you so but you got to understand when you remove something from a plant it is no longer what it used to be because what's happened is is that it's important to know that you're getting two types of messaging so and a lot of the messaging that you're getting from the internet from commercials even from a lot of people who are in the nutrition space a lot of the information that you're getting a lot of that information was created funded and um you know sort of put into our brains by the same companies who are making sugar and seed oils so a lot of the a lot of the education that we're receiving we, we don't even know that we're receiving it from the very company that benefits from us consuming the seed oil and that happens a lot and so it's important for us to know and understand that if we're going to have oils and the reason why i think this is important is because you know we consume oils for nutritional purposes to get healthy fats because oils are pure fat is nothing else okay pure fat that's it all right so when you're consuming your oil you're consuming pure fat now with that being said you want to make sure you're consuming healthy fats all right and the healthiest fats or the healthiest way to consume fats is to consume the whole foods in the form of nuts and seeds and avocados things of that nature 
Give you a for instance, when I was in Italy, I went on, I went around, all around Italy. And one of the things I would see is like these older women who were literally making avocado oil straight from the, not avocado oil, but olive oil, straight from the olive. Okay. And that, that olive oil tastes very different. I mean, very different from what we get when we get it in the bottle. The same way if I took my hand and put it on a stove like this, my hand would no longer be arranged in the same way anyway, anymore, okay? It's the same thing for those type of oils, especially when you don't get a high temperature oil like an avocado oil, which actually doesn't come from the seed, it comes from the flesh of the fruit, the, the avocado itself, okay? Hugely important. Number three, number three cause of inflammation is going to be a leaky gut, okay? When your gut becomes leaky, and I'll talk about how it can become leaky in number four. But when your gut becomes leaky, now these perfectly aligned gap junctions in the stomach that are so, they're so aligned that only very, very small things can get through. You know, the comments to the recent video I did, intro to why I don't eat meat, was quite um, quite contentious, you might say. Every once in a while, I put something out there that is triggering. And it wasn't my intention to trigger anyone in that discussion about why I don't eat meat, but I could see based on the comments, where people were coming from. There was a misunderstanding that my decision to embrace a plant-based way of, of eating and dieting was based solely on mad cow disease. Nothing could be further from the truth, but I could see how the impact of that um, part of the video could dominate all other um, messages that I brought up. But if it wasn't clear before, it should be clear that I simply became dissatisfied with meat first and foremost. But that dissatisfaction fed into a range of other considerations. The most memorable thing, the most memorable conversation I had in the comment stream on that video was with someone who had disclosed that they had switched to carnivore uh, meat and butter and they felt better. And I gave, you know, the most candid reply that came right out. And I was like, you know, that is great and I'm glad that works for you, but long-term studies show that that uh, doesn't work for everyone and that you could end up with other issues. We had a little bit of back and forth until there was a point where they asked, how long will it be before their disease reoccur? I did not admit to them that I don't believe in disease. I agree with Dr. Yaki that disease is not the right name for what we call disease. What it did instead was I emphasized the positive things where this individual wouldn't have to worry about disease. What I said to them was that sleep is number one before diet, having your sleep done properly. And that piece of advice was brought home to me by none other than Brian Johnson, the multimillionaire who hired all these PhDs to measure his body for a couple of years and do all of these um, research studies to uncover that the number one thing you can do for your health is get your proper sleep at the proper time for the proper duration. So that's number one. 
And then I told this individual that the next thing that anybody can do is avoid alcohol and avoid smoking. So that's the number two thing. And then the number three thing that I mentioned that they could do is to avoid processed sugar, processed oils, and the standard American bread or American bread products. And I would, I would go into more detail here by saying that includes like pizza crust, that includes uh, sandwich breads, that includes all kinds of bread products that's typical of American cuisine. Now, freshly made Indian naan bread out of an Indian restaurant where they where they make the naan bread right there in the right there in the restaurant after you order it. That's a whole different story. Uh, bread in a um, in an Arab Arabic uh, uh, restaurant, halal certified restaurant where they make that bread right then and there, or they made it, you know, that same day. That's a different story. But bread that's come out of a bag, box, or whatever, and that's been somewhere for like oh, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or a couple of months, that's not the right bread. And then finally, I said to this individual that the extent that you make good decisions on your health, your diet, how you eat, and I didn't mention meat versus vegetables because it's irrelevant. All the things I said are go beyond meat versus uh, vegetables. Sleep, no alcohol, no smoking, um, the proper nutrition, all that kind of stuff, right? If you can establish supremacy over your own body, then you don't worry about disease. vibration and frequency. I would be I would be lying if I said that it disheartens me sometimes when certain people downplay the use of the words vibration and frequency. I'm talking about some people who are known figures in the spiritual and AKA woke community, the consciousness community. So I watch a variety of content and I see certain individuals downplay the attempts by others to spread knowledge. They will say that, they'll say things like, just because you read a book, you, you now think you're an expert? They'll say things like, you don't need your singing bowl. Having a singing bowl doesn't make you spiritual. They'll say things like, food don't determine your spirituality. Your mindset does. They're correct when they say that, but they said it in the wrong way. Because the problem with some spiritual and consciousness leaders or let's say advocates or representatives is that just like many of the health experts on social media in these times, they lodge into the mind as much confusion as they do clarity. It's disappointing because you'll see certain consciousness and spiritual figures rise legitimately 
I, I give them their flowers. They rise legitimately on this great advice that they give. And they'll be the same ones that would love and love to just casually throw out because they're talking from the gut. They're talking from the heart. Their criticisms about people that express spirituality and consciousness a certain way. And it's counterproductive. And every word that I speak, I can already hear the counter arguments because that's how my mind works. But to stay on focus with what I'm saying, I think it's best that we encourage people in their journey, no matter how inartful, inarticulate, or rough around the edges it may be. I think it's best to encourage people in the journey. And it may be true that a person's true power comes deep within and has nothing to do with the exterior spiritual paraphernalia or trappings of spirituality. But you also have to remember why these things exist in the first place. They exist as reminders. They exist as means of encouragement to bring to the very mind itself a remembrance of mantras, meditation, mudras, energy, frequency, and vibration. And so I say all of that in this dialogue to bring it back full circle that it is 100% my point of view, 100% without deviation, that even with the exceptions that exist of those that can eat meat and still be masters of spirituality, I know at least one of them, maybe two, but they are so studied in spirituality and practiced in it, they can compensate for the consumption of meat. But I would say that for the majority, that a plant-based, whole foods diet that emphasizes living food and the living life force of the things that we bring into ourselves is a more durable movement in the spirit towards higher frequency and vibration. Ain't that right, Doug? I have a, um, a swan next to me. Is it a swan, a geese? It's about this tall. It's a beautiful creature. And I think it wants to hear the message. But I know if I rose up and I showed, attempted to show you this beautiful creature, it's more likely to fly away and I would rather not disturb its particular process in this moment. But as we seek to raise vibration, frequency, and energy, right? And it's true that you need low vibration and frequency in order to have balance. You absolutely do. But balance is not about 50-50. It's not 50% low and 50% high. It tends to be more like you got a little bit of low and you got a lot of bit of high. Because it's that high that is the emergence of creation. So that is why I am so profoundly confident in and uh, passionate about living food. But one of the things that I have surmised from my spiritual studies is that passion needs to be balanced with rationality. That's why I don't jump out here and leap into the camera, so to speak, with what I feel. Because the true art form in spirituality is about balance. You got to know when to go to war and fight your adversaries, and you got to know when to pull back and observe and advise, and you got to know when to be in between and just work with both sides of tension or competing temptation. And so, in the Supreme Valley of the Ascended Masters, 
that's what we do and what we aspire to do is to find that balance. Right? Right. It's a single geese sitting here listening. It's, it's awesome. But you seek to have that balance. It's called a level-headedness. Try to be level-headed. Not too hot, not too cold. But never 50-50. But just the right proportion. A lot more of this and a little bit of this. And sometimes you gotta say, okay, if I need to become a warrior, I need a lot of warrior and just a little bit of the peacemaker but you, not, you need, then need to know when war is done. And sometimes war only lasts for like five minutes. When war is done, then the great diplomat and peacemaker comes back into prominence and the warrior then retires and rests for a minute. And so that's why when we're talking about spirituality versus religion, you will find that some spiritual people will curse We'll argue with the best of them. We will go into combat verbally, not physically, unless it's self-defense. But we will engage, right, whereas a religious person will not. I once uh, had a uh, person tell me, it was in a place I worked, and she was my boss. And she was like, I was trying to tell her about Christianity back when I was into that. And she was like, yeah, you turn the other cheek, and you get slapped on that side too. Now, I didn't think it was funny, but now that I say this right now out of my mouth, you know, that's a pretty interesting, gutsy thing for, for my boss to say. But, um, yes, um, but she was very wise, and I didn't appreciate her wisdom at the time. And um, that's the thing. In spirituality, it's more about an observation of reality. <sighs> that was a spider. Anyway, an observation of reality. And you observe reality and you work with the reality. Rather than always seek to bend the reality to your will. Or to try to interpret the reality according to a doctrine. So, yes. Living food and the living lifestyle that brings you onto that path. And that's why I don't eat meat. That's why I engage with vegetables and fruits and minerals and those sorts of things. Because they're part of an overall process of evolution that is going to take some time. I'm a work in progress. And I am thoroughly enjoying the journey. times like this when you look out into the waters and you see how the wind interacts with the water and the borders that the earth has on the waters that you appreciate these rhythms, these patterns, these geometries of what they can do and what unfolds. One of the most restorative things you can do is to gaze into the water and not necessarily realize everything, but it's a type of grounding for the mind. You have the grounding of the earth where if you put your feet barefoot into the dirt, into the mud, you can pick up the energies of the earth and synchronize the rhythms within the physical body. But I find that when you look at waters on days like this, where the wind is collaborating with the water to emerge a type of rhythm, a rhythm you cannot synchronize with artificial intelligence or any other technologies. 
because these patterns are too are totally unique. They are truly random. And when you stare into this water and you see things that you can't even describe with words, the types of rhythms and ribbons. I see ribbons in this water, but I can't describe them through any English terminology. And you see wave patterns. We all know what a wave is. But these waves are completely different than the waves you can see on a computer screen or anything else. And as your mind receives this energy, receives these patterns, receives these ripples, it cleanses the mind and it retunes the mind. This is what we call etheric grounding. Is the grounding in the ether. And I would never give words to this experience except that I know that a recording is taking place and this is an opportunity to share an experience that I've had a few times in my life. But when I gaze into the water, there's a rebalancing and a reordering within my eternal universe. This is the origin of life on the planet, and this is the origin of existence, the waters themselves. I don't know if this, um, Is it a crane? C-R-A-N-E? I don't know if you can see him over here, but we're in complete harmony right now. He is unbothered, unbothered it. I don't know what's gender. It is unbothered by my presence, and I am unbothered by its presence. We're in total natural harmony with the landscape and with the experience that we have. And there was a few rain sprinkles, but it didn't deter any of us from being out here and enjoying this day. It's my time to depart and move on in this journey of life, put this recording together, upload it for your viewing on May the 6th, 2024, and see what happens the rest of this month. If you have the opportunity, enjoy living food. If you have to eat meat, you still eat meat, you must eat meat, that's your choice, that's your decision. I don't judge anybody for that. But anything that you do now, you can always enhance it with life-affirming activity. So if you're going to have a steak or you're going to have a hamburger, consider having some fresh vegetables with it having a good salad with it. Consider eating some more fruits like grapes, strawberries, blueberries. And who knows, you might decide to transition more on that side of the spectrum. But even if you don't, adding more living food will balance out all that's going on in life and bring about greater benefits. And if you have any questions, keep in mind that I am not the number one expert in the world, nor even in the top 1,000. 
but what I do know I can share and perhaps it will point you in the right direction to where you will find the answers that you need and that will prove beneficial in your journey. I'll see you later.